This is one of the most amazing cases of under-promising and over-delivering. I'm actually shocked. Very few people know about this secret. It is a secret, and it is a massive advantage of a Tesla electric car versus other models. Other models do not have this. They do not have this hidden advantage, which could save your butt when it comes time to a situation that you don't expect. It's going to happen to you at some point in your life. I almost guarantee it. The difference is, if you're driving a Tesla electric car, pretty good chance you're going to get out unscathed. If you're not, well, could lead to an expensive tow job or something along those lines. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. You're probably thinking, what on earth are you talking about? This makes no sense. I have a Tesla electric car. I didn't know about this. Yeah, pretty much no one knows about this. I don't know why, because Bjorn Nyland has talked about it on his channel. But to be honest, not that many people are aware of this hidden secret. In fact, I've actually never heard anyone talk about it on a forum anywhere. And it hasn't been reported at all on really pretty much any of the mainstream news sites mainstream EV sites, but it's something you should know about. Whether or not you're considering buying an EV or whether or not you actually own a Tesla, it could save you not only um, a situation of being stranded, but also a lot of stress. When your trip computer reads zero in your Tesla, well, pretty good chance you can actually get a lot more range. Pretty good chance there's a lot of range left in your car. If you have a Tesla, if you don't, pretty good chance there's zero. This sounds like I'm spouting some kind of like Tesla fanboy nonsense, but actually it's true. Now this applies to the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive, standard range plus SR plus rear-wheel drive. It's kind of confusing because Tesla call it the rear-wheel drive model or the standard range plus depending on which country you're in. It also applies to the same model of Tesla Model Y as well. And of course, these two models are the cheapest models that Tesla sell for the Model Y and the Model 3. So they're the most popular. That means that, uh, well, about 60% of Tesla's vehicle sales are these models, meaning most people who buy Tesla will actually have this feature and they won't even know about it. Tesla doesn't advertise this at all. At 90 kilometers an hour or 56 miles an hour, the made in China Model 3 wheel drive has a range of over 400 kilometers or 250 miles. That's even in cold weather conditions at minus three degrees. That's a pretty good range at that speed at minus three degrees. Tesla has enormously improved the cold weather performance of its cars. Now, that is the range until it says zero state of charge or 0% state of charge on the dashboard. But actually, the battery has a massive reserve capacity that other EVs do not have. And am I, am I saying this because I'm speculating? No, I'm not speculating. The testing has been done. The evidence is there. There's plenty of videos showing it, but you've got to be patient and actually watch them and yeah, whether or not you have the patience to watch all these videos and watch all this stuff when, uh, to be honest, you're just looking for a little bit of information summarized. Uh, yeah, not a lot of people do. Earlier this month, Bjorn Nyland had an opportunity to check a brand new Model 3 rear-wheel drive and run it past 0% state of charge, which a normal driver wouldn't really do usually unless they had to. Maybe the charges weren't working. That could happen. Happens a lot, right? You think there's some charges you can use. You go there. Oh no, none of them are working. I mean, if it's not Tesla chargers, that's actually pretty common. Uh, then what do you do? You go, ah, uh, well, where are the next chargers? Well, if there's none near you, let's say you're on a road trip, well, what happens, right? Some kind of crisis, or you keep driving and just hope that your car actually can get to your next destination. The Scan My Tesla app indicates that the car has about 60.6 .6 kilowatt hour nominal battery capacity and around seven kilowatt hour energy buffer below 0% state of charge, which is a surprisingly high value and more than 10% of the total. That's massive. 60.6 .6 kilowatt hours of usable battery and then a seven kilowatt hour buffer. So can you actually use the seven kilowatt hours? You can. I mean, you, you probably don't want to do it all the time, but you actually can. So the battery pack size is actually closer to 68 kilowatt hours when people think it's 60. Now, it sounds like a small battery pack. It used to be smaller. Tesla's actually increased the size of this pack. However, there's one thing that Tesla's vehicles have. They're much lighter than the competition, much lighter. There is no one making vehicles as light as Tesla. 
for the size of car. If you compare a, uh, the size of car, I do this on the channel all the time. You guys might have seen the videos. I'll compare the same size car, the same wheelbase, the same interiors, very, very similar. And always the Tesla vehicles are substantially lighter, 10 to 30% lighter. It's a big advantage. And it's why that battery pack, which sounds small, actually gives you a lot more range than you think it would. That's one of the reasons. Obviously, the efficiency is part of that. Now, during Bjorn's test, the car was driving normally without any power drop until it switched to neutral mode. Interestingly, the heating was still working even when the battery was at 0%. Bjorn Nyland said he thought there should be a gradual power drop. He was critical of this uh, because then it would give you an idea that the battery life was going down. I think that's ridiculous. The screen tells you exactly what's happening. It tells you that battery life is going down. Tesla's actually, their cars are very good at telling you. I've seen now hundreds and hundreds of comments from people saying just how good the vehicles are at telling you how much battery life is left. You don't need the power to decrease or the, the motors to start acting weird in order to notify you of this. It's on the screen in front of you. So I don't understand what Bjorn was on about there. Then what Bjorn did is when the battery pack got to 0%, he kept driving it until it just died completely. Did it die completely? Well, no, not at all. In fact, the Model 3 did an additional 56 kilometers. 56 kilometers. So that's 35 miles, basically. Your car will do an extra 35 miles of range when you think it can't do any more, when you think it's at zero. That's pretty handy if you need it. Now, he ran the same exact test with the Tesla Model Y Performance. He hasn't done it with the Model Y Standard Range, but the same battery pack. So it's going to give you the same results. It might give you a little bit less range. You might get something like 30 miles instead of 36 miles. It's going to be pretty close to that figure though. Model Y Performance though doesn't have quite the same buffer. The Model Y Performance has a 4.1 kilowatt hour buffer, which gave it an additional 34 kilometers of range or 21.1 miles. So you're probably going to get a, a bit more than that out of a Tesla Model 3 Performance. If you've got a Model 3 Performance or a Model Y Performance, you'll get more than the range, 34 kilometers, or 21 miles when it says zero. That's what you're gonna get around about, depending on the way you're driving, where you're driving, how cold it is, etc. Same thing with the Model 3 performance, but a bit more. Probably gonna get closer to 40 kilometers or about 25 miles in the Model 3 performance. The Model Y standard range, I would estimate, would give you around about 40 kilometers or just under 30 miles of range once the odometer reads zero. So what about the competition? What will they give you? Well, some of them do have a bit extra. Most of them don't have anything. Most of them just die completely at zero. Let's look at the ones that actually don't die at zero. First of all, the BMW i4 M50, obviously a pretty pricey car, more in the price range of something like a Model X, but that one will give you 20 kilometers of range once it dies. However, that was tested at 24 Celsius, which is pretty much the ideal temperature conditions. In colder conditions, you'll get a bit less than that. 20 kilometers though, that's still something. The Neo ES8 with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, that will give you an extra 10 kilometers of range. Obviously the ES8 is also more of a competitor for the Tesla Model X, not really for the Model Y and the Model 3, a bit more expensive. That's also the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the only other car he's tested that gives you any range beyond zero is the Mercedes EQS 450 Plus, also a competitor more for a Model S type price range. That'll give you seven kilometers. So that'll give you just over four miles of range when it hits zero. The Audi e-tron, 55, that'll give you minus one kilometer. So it actually dies before it says zero. The Hyundai Ionic will give you no more. It'll die at zero. The Hongqi EHS9, 99 kilowatt hour model. That's a luxury Chinese electric car. They're on sale in Norway right now. And I think they're selling them in other European countries as well. That's more of a competitor as well for the Model X. That, that car will die at zero as well. The MG Marvel R, that'll die at zero as well. The MG4, zero as well. The X-Punk P7 Performance Wing, zero as well. As you can see, even the cars that will give you a bit of extra range, it's only a very small amount in comparison to the extra range you'll get in your Tesla car. I thought this was really cool to know. A lot of you who own Teslas, you probably don't know this. You might have gotten into the experience, right, where your odometer is getting close to zero and you're starting to think, oh, damn, uh, I'm getting concerned now but actually you don't really need to be. You're gonna get a fair bit more range after it hits zero. That seven kilowatt hour extra battery reserve is pretty big. And you can see why it's gonna give you an extra 56 kilometers or 35 miles of range, even after the odometer hits zero. I'm gonna preempt the comments that are gonna, I, 
I am sure going to be in the comment section below are going to be false. They're going to mislead you into thinking that this video is incorrect. Now, people are claiming that it's something with an LFP battery pack. If you don't charge it to 100% or discharge to 100%, something can happen with the battery management system. And it, what it does is it gives you a bigger buffer. And if you reset it, it resets itself. And that's why there's a, a 7 kilowatt hour battery buffer here in this car. Incorrect. Sorry, my friends. False, false, false. The reason being, if this were true, why are we seeing the exact same effects in Tesla's vehicles, which have NMC batteries and not LFP battery packs? Yes, the effects are not quite as great, but they're not actually all that different. The truth here is Tesla vehicles are really the only cars that will provide these kinds of results once you hit 0%. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you own an EV from another brand and you've had this experience, it's gone down to zero and you've just kept on driving to see how far it will go or, or you haven't kept on driving to see how far it will go because it just stopped. Let us know your experience in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.